Hey, what is up everybody? This is Jason with devslopes.com and in this video we are going to learn how to use mixins. And to help practice this principle, we are going to create a grid of some uh, styled boxes that are going to uh, populate this section here. So let's go ahead and open up our text editor. Alright, so what we're going to do is we are going to create these uh, boxes, these styled boxes, um, to put inside of the main content section that we have created. And what I want these boxes to represent is like maybe a profile image of somebody, all right? So inside of our modules, we are going to create uh, this module. So go ahead and click new file, and I'm just gonna call this uh, proimage.sass. And don't forget your leading underscore, because I didn't. All right, and go ahead and click enter. Now, before you start styling or anything, go ahead and quickly import it in here so we don't forget. All right, and this is pro image. Awesome. So now that we've got that set up, what we wanna do here is we're going to create a box with uh, some rounded corners. Um, it's gonna have a fixed uh, width and height here, and then we're gonna add a box shadow to it as well. And remember, when we're working with modules, everything that we want to put into this folder uh, needs to be a class. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a class called Pro Image. Um, that's the class that I've already added on the uh, elements in our index. Let's start off giving this a color. So we're going to give it a background color of brand, and we will do primary. All right, and what we want to have this uh, card do is I want to have it build an instance of four cards across the screen. All right, and then we want the rest of the four to stack underneath it. So we can do this by working with the width of the card. So we're going to do a width, not like that. We're going to do a width of, I'm going to do 22%, okay? And I spelled that completely wrong. Great, that is much better. So we're going to give it a width of 22%. And technically, if the viewport is 100% and we divide it by 4, that's 25%. But we're going to be adding uh, some padding and some margin to this. Um, so I've shrunk the width so that everything can fit properly. And you might have to adjust the width depending on the size of your uh, display. All right, so we've got our width there. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a height of 120 pixels. And I want to give this a display of inline block because I want these to stack from left to right. And to be sure that happens, we're going to give it a float left. And we want these uh, to be separated from one another. So I'm going to add a margin of 15 pixels. And this will set a margin of fix and this will set a margin of 15 pixels all around our box here. All right, let's get started on the corners for this image. So we are going to um, use the WebKit because the border radius isn't compatible exactly with everything, uh, all browsers. So we're going to do the uh, border radius. And we're going to do uh, 50 pixels. And go ahead and copy this. And we need to uh, paste it three times. And this is going to work for Mozilla. And then this one's going to be the standard. Awesome, so we just took care of the border radius here. And let's go ahead and add a box shadow here. So to do this again, we're gonna do the uh, WebKit. And we need to do the uh, box shadow. And then let's give it a um, zero vertical, or I guess zero Y, zero X axis. We'll give it 15 pixels of spread and then give it a color of this like half black color. <laughs> All right, so copy that, paste it uh, two more times. We're going to do the same thing, Mozilla, and then we're just going to chop this off here. Awesome. So looking good, looking kind of big here, getting long and lengthy. Um, let's do a border, and we're going to do a border of one pixel, and we're going to make this solid. And then the color that we want to use is, why don't we go ahead and use our brand primary. All right, so this is pretty lengthy. 
All right, and this is where I want to introduce and go a little bit deeper into mixins and how powerful they are. So we've got this uh, pro image here, and we've got all these really cool uh, border radius and box shadows and borders here. But what if we wanted to reuse this stuff on another element on our page? Um, we're going to have to write this out every single time. And this is where mixins come into play. So what I want you to do is in your parent folder, the SAS folder, right click and we're going to create a new file. And this is going to be a partial and it's going to be called mixins.sass. Okay, and this is where we're going to store our mixins. All right, now in order to create a mixin, I'll show you the syntax here right after uh, we import this here. And I'm going to just do it right under the variables. I don't think it has to be, it's just what I like to do. All right, so we've got our mixins added. Now let's learn how to use the syntax for a mixin. Now we briefly covered this uh, before. Um, when we create a mixin, we're going to start with the equal sign and we're simply going to give it a name. And I'm just going to call this uh, border. All right, and then we put two parentheses here. And that's it. All right, and then underneath here is where we're going to be able to add our properties. So why don't we go over to uh, this file here and go ahead and just cut this out of here. All right, we're going to leave these here because these properties are specific to this profile image, profile image um, that we're working with. And then the mixin is something that we want to be able to reuse. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slap it here. And what we could do is I could actually go ahead now and inside here, I like to do it at the top, we can simply use the plus sign and then import the border. Okay, just like so. And what that would do is it's going to grab that entire border uh, class thing for us. So let's go ahead now and check this out in the browser. Cool, and there it is. So you can see that we've used this mixin now, and now on our class that we've created these cards with, um, we've got this class that uses a mixin that is auto-generating the uh, border radius and everything for us. But what if we want to use this same border on other things, but we don't always want the background shadow to be set or the border radius to be 50? We can change that. So back over to your text editor, we're going to add something extra here. Back into our mixin, what we're going to do is we are going to add a, uh, a parameter and we're going to call this rad for radius. You can call it anything you want. And I'm going to call this one shadow. And we're going to make one uh, called, what else do we have? We have one called border. All right, so now we've got uh, three uh, things that we're working with here, three parameters. And then what we're going to do is we can come here and we're going to replace this with rad. Replace it with that uh, value here. And then what we're going to do here is do the same thing and we're going to replace it with shadow. And then simply take your border, copy that, and we're going to do that right here. All right. So now we're going to come back over to here and check this out. We can uh, now come inside here and we're going to set first our radius. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller now. I'm going to do a 10 pixel radius. The next value was our box shadow. And check this out. We can do the Y and X axis. We can still give it the 15 pixel uh, spread here. And then give it a color of like that half black color. Okay, so that's cool with that one uh, parameter, we can still put in the full values that a uh, box shadow will accept. And then the last one here was the border, and we're going to do our one pixel solid, and then we can again just throw in our brand primary. All right, so go ahead and save that, and the difference that we should see is the border radius is going to be a lot smaller. So open up the browser, we're going to go ahead and refresh this and check that out. It's a lot smaller. So that is a really good example how to use mixins and how powerful these mixins can be. And if you even wanted to go further with your mixins, 
is say that we just wanted this border, we could rename it to like border style, and we could use the uh, box shadows and the border uh, properties inside of here, and then we could make our own independent uh, border radius uh, mixin, like so. So we could actually call this, um, let's see, border rad, okay? And then inside of here, we would just pass in one argument, and then we could go ahead and cut this, and just throw it underneath here. And what this will do is if there were other elements on our page that we wanted to add a radius to, we could simply do that. And let me go ahead and suck this up to the top here, tab that in. And then what we would do uh, here is we could uh, add that uh, border rad. See, it's made, us, made it available to us. And then we could simply just put in uh, 10 pixels here. Now, uh, with that being said, you would need to make sure that you remove uh, the radius parameter off of this one because you're only working now with a shadow and a border. All right, and then just to show you that this can be changed, um, let's make it really small and we'll just do five pixels here. And that way you can see that we're using uh, two mixins. Launch the browser here and our border radius should change. And it did just a little bit. Rewind the video and look at it, it did. It changed very minute. I don't think that was proper grammar, but you know what I mean. So that is it, that wraps up this video. We have learned how to use mix-ins and uh, how reusable and powerful those are. That's a wrap, let's keep moving on.